these two vaccines have in common and how they're different from previous vaccines that we've had. Um, they're both RNA vaccines. So just a quick refresher on what RNA is. You guys probably know what DNA is, right? And a double helix. Um, RNA is basically the DNA makes a copy of itself in the form of RNA. And RNA, instead of being a double helix, is a single chain. And it still follows like the complementary base pair rule. This single chain leaves the nucleus and goes into the cytoplasm where the ribosomes, which their job is to make protein, read the code on the RNA and build the protein. This is all coming back to you, right, from freshman year. Okay, so an RNA vaccine, the way this works is, say you have a coronavirus, this is a beautiful model, it's actually a dog toy. <laughs> but this virus, basically the RNA is inside of it, and then all around the surface are these proteins. Um, they have names, we'll just call them the spike proteins. And those proteins basically are what triggers your immune response. So this virus comes in and your immune system sees it and basically sends out a red alert. And then antibodies um, end up attaching to these little spike proteins and preventing it from going into a cell and also signaling for its destruction by T cells or killer T cells. So the thing is, is like this little virus comes in and your immune response is activating based on these spike proteins, okay? The idea with an RNA vaccine is that you get your cells in a little tricksy way to make those spike proteins. So they're not injecting you with a virus. They're not injecting you with anything except a little piece of RNA code that's gonna go into your cells and it's gonna build the spikes. Not the virus, just the spikes. And once those spikes are built, because they're not your own you know, tissue, your immune system is gonna see those spikes and go rawr and go after them. And it's gonna build up a response. And then you're gonna have these memory cells that remember when these spike proteins came in so that when it sees the real virus come in, with the real spike proteins and the real nasty RNA that's inside of it that can infect your cells, it's going to respond because it remembers from the earlier immune response, which was just from a little piece of RNA. The RNA did not contain the stuff that would allow the virus to replicate. The RNA just contained the code for these little spikes. And then that's how you're basically getting an immune response ahead of when you might actually see the virus. And I think Moderna said that um, they tested on like about 30,000 volunteers. They did use a placebo. Um, they did use like, so half of their group had a, a placebo, meaning they got injected, but nothing was in it. And the other half got the little piece of RNA to basically build those spike proteins and initiate an immune response. And they found that um, after a period of time, five out of a hundred, I guess, that got the vaccine did get sick. So it's still not 100% effective, but no vaccine is. Sometimes your body just doesn't mount a big enough immune response. Um, if you've ever had chicken pox, well, you guys are vaccinated for chicken pox, so never mind. But sometimes you can get vaccinated and still get the virus because you have to have mounted a big enough immune response to begin with. So about 5% of the people that got the vaccine still got sick. But the idea, if we get enough people vaccinated, then you create what we call herd immunity. So that even if you're one of that little percentage of people that, that just didn't amount an immune response, you'll still be protected because everybody around you will be protected and they won't get sick and won't be able to pass the virus to you. 